Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. He is also excited. Well, about us a few and meh about a few. Yeah. But this is Rare Whiskey Friday. Yeah, Rare Whiskey Friday. We're going to go through and give first impressions on several different whiskeys. Occasionally, these are large brands, more often than not. These are going to be your smaller. So, man, so close. Smaller craft distilleries without a tremendous amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on one of these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to the magnificent bastard who sent the whiskey. See, you, you get one, and you then, get yeah. one, fun, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, you just phone it in, it's fine. All right. It's fine. So, first, we're going to start with a gift from where is he? Oh, it's she. Renita, and by the way, we've been hassled over and over by mispronouncing Renita's name. It's Revis. Revis? Yeah. Yeah, and I always call her Revis. Hey, Revis. No, I know it's and, Revis. And look. Who's been saying Revis forever? Here's the thing. I know what her name is. He doesn't, no. Nope. I've known her. How he, long have we known her? She's you, come and hung out at the distillery. No, She's brought family. She knows nothing. I'm the only one who cares. Yeah. You should send no. all your whiskeys care of. I, I pronounce it that way, the same way that we do Gaberba way. They won't be reviewed. It's a marker of love. But they will be appreciated. <laughs> this is Punjabi Club Rye. All right. And this is, is she a She is a patron saint oh, then that's, of whiskey. That's the double minis. Hold on. The double minis? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this plastic? Can't do plastic. No. This is taking a while. Hold on. This one. This is glass. It's got to be glass. Ready to ravage. You patron saint of whiskey. Do 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 no, I'm trying something different. Juke, 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 it's not motivated. It's not good. We already have crap flying on the screen. We have bells. We have like coordinated movements. Yeah. And then you're just throwing in yeah. random bullshittery. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to keep it interesting. So by the way, the ones I grabbed were a 10 year old Dublin whiskey, uh, John Jameson and Son Limited. Oh, that's the one that they gave us. And then McAllen 17. Ah, uh, is that, was that fine oak? Make out uh, rare oak? Fine oak? I don't know. Fine oak, it says. Huh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, so I can't find out anything about this whiskey other than it's a Wisconsin distillery called Minhas Brewery uh, and Minhas Distillery. They do liqueurs, they have a brewery, they do cocktails. Ooh. And there was a quote. Oh man, that's nice. I like that. On the nose, at least. But I'm going to say something about this because I'm curious. In theory, they make whiskey, right? It's a perfumey cherry for me on the nose. But this bottle says produced by and bottled by, not distilled. And then it's, a, it's a perfumey cherry and a sandalwood. And then there's a quote on their website that says this. Are you ready for this line? Yeah. A wonderful aroma from a beautiful Canadian whiskey. <laughs> That's what I said. This is not smell Canadian at all. I know, but I'm wondering, did they source a Canadian rye? Like from Alberta Distillers. A rye? Well, Canadian rye, like Alberta Distillers, where they're making actual rye whiskey. Yeah, but I'm looking for like the rye spires. Oh, it's some. rye, right? It's definitely there. But I'm going to pull the Alberta dark rye because I totally could buy it. What piece of rye are you getting on the nose? I'm getting that baking spice. It's very light and mild. I'm getting that sort of like baking spice bready note. Oh, bready and oh, bready. Oh, so, so bready, but bready isn't limited to rye, though. It is. This kind of bready is for me. Okay. Oh yeah. Turn it down, Alberta. See, see, this is forty percent. I think what you're getting is baking 45. spice. I would categorize as a bready sandalwood. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I could get that. And then, okay. All right. Ooh. Now go back and smell the Punjabi club. See a similar bready. Was that the first thing you handed me? Yeah. Okay. This and that's an Alberta, that's a Canadian rye. This is much more caramel. Though. Yes, it this is. This is classic, what you would expect coming out of Canada. But the Punjabi club is also too, proof down to 40. Man, the, like a tremendous amount of caramel in that second one. It tastes like a really watered down rye. Oh, on the, yeah. On the taste. It's decent. There's a, the rice spicing that shows up. More it's so dry. Than the it's note. drier and drier. More so than the bready note. Yeah. What was the proof? 40. 
Okay. 80, pr 80 proof, 40% alcohol. Oh, there was actually more going on in the nose than I would have thought with just 40 uh, proof there. All right, we're going to move on. Okay. And that was a glancing blow of an impression. Yeah, it, I just, it's just a boring Canadian rye, basically, is what it reminds me of. Yeah, I got like a nice sandalwood note. I like the sandalwood note. You it's don't weird. always get the sandalwood note. Occasionally you do. I'm a sucker for the sandalwood note. Sucker? I'm a sucker. Did you burn sandalwood. sandalwood in your apartment in college on those incense sticks? I don't know. I think I got one because it was mandatory, but I don't know what it was. Because <laughs> it was mandatory. It's, required. it's like you got it. It came issued with your Bob Marley poster. <laughs> right. Your college, your college student kit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a gift from Jason and Eric Souter. It was mostly Natty Light in the kit. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> Jason Eric Souter, you magnificent. Bastards! Yeah. All right, uh, Traverse City, who we just gave the rye a place of honor. Yes. Now, I have heard a lot of pushback yeah. on not making these accessible, as in, like, the comments blew up with people going, wait, that was, I was looking forward to that. Right. Because you guys put Whistle Pig, I'd never had it. Yeah. But I can get it. Right. I went and bought a bottle. You're right. It's quintessential rye. Oh. If you start putting things up there I can't get, what's the point? Now, I think, why don't we do both? It, I think we've proven that there can be two bottles. Oh, you shut your filthy hole. You shut your filthy hole. You wait. You wait. Mr. I can't do three additional shelves because my life is so I know. complicated. I know. So complicated. I know. And now you get like three comments. Yeah. Let's do 24. Maybe. Maybe and it's double no, down pushing back on everything. I'm only pushing back because it's your idea, <laughs> not because it's a bad idea. <laughs> uh, I think we've proven we can put two bottles per shelf, so it could be that we have like accessible quintessential and our quintessential. Right. I'm just saying. I wonder if that shelf can handle. <laughs> that thing's gonna if it's rated for it's gonna yeah. fall forward. <laughs> we need to bolt it into the back wall. <laughs> All right, so this is from Traverse City. This is their straight wheat whiskey. Mm -hmm. Barrel proof, 58.5% alcohol. Okay. Getting uh, more than four years old. Like a honey bread. I got, oh, I, got, wow. I, got, I got another bready note, but it's like a honey, honey bready note, and then there's something. What's the proof? Did you it say? really is. It's 58 and change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It I, really is. I knew it was high. I didn't realize it was almost Wheat bread. 60. Whole wheat honey bread with butter and honey on it. Yeah, yeah. So when I, I worked in a bread shop in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and one of the cool things that they did was it, you did a shift at the bread counter every day as part of your customer service shift. Yeah. And at the bread counter, you would have like eight loaves of fresh bread, all different kinds, mm -hmm. and any customer at any time could walk in, request a slice of bread, and put butter and honey on it, and they didn't have to buy anything, and the slices all had to be at least an inch thick. Oh. Right? So it was like legit. Yep. Like, so people would come in, order coffee, and, and then you'd be like, I'll take a slice of the honey wheat yeah. and just, just fresh bread, use big old hunk off of it, hand it to them, mm. and they'd sit down with their bread. And, but it was a great idea. Yeah. But it reminds me of the whole wheat honey that we made at that shop, buttered and actual honey on it. It's just rich and, uh, it's not rich, rich is the wrong word. It's bready, dense. Yeah. But sweet honey. Well, every bit of the of the character of those flavors that you would expect a 58% alcohol, uh -huh. it's, it's there. Oh, whoa. That flavor is like a dry spice. We keep hitting this where wheat whiskey, when turned up to 10, yeah. is dry instead of the wheat grain providing a soft sweetness to the blunt mix. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder if that's real then. Like. What was the well, one that we did? There was a red winter wheat. Was, I think it was just like last week or maybe. Yeah, it was a red winter wheat. No more wheat. than two weeks ago for sure. There it is. Uh, dry Hills. Yeah. 100% red winter wheat. And you remember how dry, how it just was super dry? Right. We're getting the same thing from this one. The first moment of the taste. This is very sweet. Mm -hmm. Almost a maraschino cherry sweetness. And then it unfolds into this much more... Um, thicker, heavier, drier character. Yeah, with a little water, it, it, the dryness evaporates a little and it stays sweet. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. But that does evolve over time. Like uh, the first little moment, mm -hmm. that's, um, for me at least, that's a maraschino cherry, the straight yeah, up I get that. candy cherry. We're gonna do two back to back from magnificent bastard, Garrett Rain. Garrett Rain, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Mm. 
Garrett emailed yesterday saying, hey, did those Virginia bottles ever actually make it to you? Because right. it was like four months ago. That's a, well, I was like, look, dude, we're I, getting to them today. It, it's about four Sorry. to six months is the average right now. Okay, so remember Virginia Distillers, one we kind of dug, they uh, are the ones uh, who had Highland whiskey on their bottles and Scotland sued them. You know, but it's only one Highland and it's okay. like, no, but the Virginia Highlands are real. It right. is a thing. Okay. I was trying to figure out originally why it was that that happened to them. Because I know plenty of people who do vaguely Scottish things on their bottles and no one's come after them, right? Yeah. And I, when I looked at these bottles, I realized, oh, I know what's going on. They're sourcing Scottish whiskey. And to do that, you get involved with the Scottish Whiskey Association. And they have rules. And so the Scottish Whiskey Association now has eyeballs on their labels and their right. distillery. And so they sort of brought themselves to the attention of the SWA, right. who then felt like they needed to have an opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are both sourced scotch blended with Virginia malt okay. and then uh, finished in a port cask. What a cool name though, Garrett Rain. Yeah. Garrett port cask, Rain. cider cask. So, okay. Do you want them side by side? The, both of those are very interesting to me. Yeah. I've had port cask before, not often enough. I, I'm much, uh, I'm still very curious as to the breadth and depth of what can happen in a port cask. I don't know if I've ever had cider cask, ever. Let's start with the cider cask. I just poured the port though. So okay. set that one aside. Right. I'm trying to get some distance from that wheat whiskey we just did. Oh, I know. It's still with me. You can see the color difference. Yeah. But the reddish one is port. Yeah. The light hay colored one is the cider cask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From everything I read about these guys makes me think we'd really like them. Like they're working legit clear about what they're making. And they're, oh man, I can smell the cider from here. I it's so dominating smell, everything. My nose is in it and I'm looking for the cider. I'm mm. looking for... Yeah, do you smell nope, that? Nope, I smell, it's what I was just smelling. Maybe I don't have enough cider reference points to be able to pull that. You know what these smell like? They smell like versions of monkey shoulder. I could see that. Yeah, I'll that know. malt musty funk. Yes, yes. Yeah. More of like a, a candied fruitiness teased out of that. But I there's a, very much get what you're saying. There's a Jolly Rancher hard candy yeah. on this cider. Yeah, like a candy fruitiness. Or I guess from your angle, it'd be a fruity candy. And that makes a difference. Is it a candied fruit or is it a fruit flavored candy? Yeah, fruity candy. Oh, whoa, there's uh, much more. Some, is there peat smoke in there? Or is that just lingering dryness from the wheat whiskey? I don't know. I'm gonna get a couple sips in before I start locking in notes because the wheat whiskey was so clingy. Mm-hmm. But at first blush, I. I think I'm, st it, hold on, but, so the thing that was notable so far is the presence of the nose. I was prepared for some pretty bold flavors. It shows up as much more subtle, mm -hmm. subtle on the taste. And I think I finished, I am getting a little bit of that um, cider character eventually on a finish and it's a little bit, I'm gonna have to live with it a little bit more. It's not smoke, it's just barrel spice. It's just, okay, yeah, I wasn't getting a, a peatiness. Yeah, well, I couldn't tell if it was peppery peat or mm -hmm. if it was like a spicy wood note. And it's, this is really mild and pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that the cider didn't just dominate this thing. Right. It's definitely a hint. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the, well, I like it. This is a good. It's like a, a nice balance between like an, an apple-y fruitiness mm -hmm. and then like a, like a maltiness. Yeah, a malty, musty with a little bit of barrel spice. And, and then like some, Cider, apple cidery. Huh. Yeah. I'm getting like an apple. It's like a, maybe like a Fuji type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. All right, I'm going to move over to the port cast. Oh, and then on the nose. I go back to the nose after the taste. The nose is much, much, much more present now. Retro nasal is the word. I like this one a lot more on the nose. It's, they're very close. Well, was you, you moved on already. Hold on. Yeah, I moved over to the port, but they're still, even though the color difference is huge and the finishing is different, the base malt is is yeah there. The, there's a commonality thread between these two that's very strong. Mm -hmm. Their finishing is subtle. Yes, not but, dominating, but still recognizable. Yeah, it's there. You're not having to squint and imagine <laughs> is it there? No, it's there, but it's not just completely changing the core of the whiskey. Still the malt musty note. Oh, that comes across as more, even more 
gotchy. Yeah, I like that one better because it comes across as more sweet, almost sherry cask. And then there's like a, almost like a, I want to say a briny layer. Yeah, I caught that briny layer in the first one. I was attributing it to the malt must. Right. But you think maybe it's a thread between the... Uh... Yeah. I think it is the malt must. I think that musty malt note is altering based on the finishing. Mm -hmm. it, what it's accenting, what it's bearing. I like that one. Yeah, these are both really nice. And I think uh, a lot of times if you're doing like a whiskey nerd kind of whiskey, mm -hmm. it's tempting to just go big with the flavors and just layers upon layers and it's, it's, um, it's loud and it's complicated. This I think was a nice job of having some subtlety, mm -hmm. some character, but also um, enough, enough there to be interesting. What was the proof? Both of these are 46. Yeah, yeah, enough there to be interesting, but uh, let me put it this way. They're thick enough mm -hmm. to grab onto, but they're subtle enough to titillate you. Is that gonna go on their website now? It's a little, little titillation. <laughs> you want a little teasing, right? Sometimes you don't want to be attacked. You just want a little tease. A little, little, little pet. Okay, sure. We, All right, I think that does this. Like, these two are my favorites. It's a whole new level. So we do nosing notes, we do uh, tasting notes, and then we do uh, a marketing spiel? No, hand gesture notes. Oh, hand gesture What notes. does this whiskey do for you? <laughs> That's what, what it does for me. The curve, oh. and then the washout. Oh, she's got the thickness on that. All right. <laughs> Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me and fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver, sorry. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. You almost did a woman. That's what you did. You almost, you're like, you're like, it's like this. Ooh, and then you gave up. Yeah. Because if I went in, I know. Like, oh, Daniel. It's obvious. Oh, Daniel. Oh, what are you doing? You, 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 <laughs> you randy boy. <laughs> and then you just took it out. That's took right. Took it out so you could have deniability. That's I know right. I know your game. I know what I'm doing. Okay.